Hey there, it's Jake from Texla, and today we're going to be going over a quick crash course on phone number types. So to start, there are three phone number types. First is a 10-digit local number. This is going to begin with an area code, and it's going to be followed by seven digits, and it's verified via HUP 10 dlc That's most likely what your mobile cell phone uh, number is. Next up, we have toll-free. This is going to begin with 800, 833, 844, 855, 866, 877, and 888. This is verified via the toll-free verification form. Last up are short codes. This is going to be a five or six digit number, and it's going to be for enterprise companies. Uh, it allows a large amount of texts to be sent in a short amount of time. So we've got some terms that we're going to want to know. Uh, we'll break them down here real quick. First up is MPS score, also referred to as throughput. So if you ever hear one or the other, uh, they're interchangeable. Uh, MPS score stands for message per second score. Uh, it is the amount of messages that a Twilio number can send per second. Uh, it's going to be determined by number type and verification outcome. Next up is A2P 10 DLC. I know that sounds like a lot of gibberish. Uh, it stands for application to person 10 digit long code, and it's going to be the verification for local numbers. Next up is verified toll free. So if you ever see VTF, that's what that's going to stand for is a verified toll free number. It's going to be a toll free number that has gone through a verification process with Twilio. Um, and it's got some benefits there that we'll go through in a bit. Next up is high throughput toll free. If you see uh, HTTF, that's what that stands for. So after you verify your toll free number and it goes into a verified toll free state, you can actually verify it again to achieve a higher MPS score. Um, so it's just like a secondary vetting process uh, that you can use to achieve an even higher MPS on toll free numbers. Next up is segments. So a segment is going to be 160 characters, and that's how Twilio bills the SMS. It doesn't charge per like message. It charges actually per segment. So um, for instance, if it's a 400 character text and you send it to 10 people, that doesn't get billed as 10 messages. It actually gets billed as 30 because there's three segments in that message and it's sent to 10 people. So it gets charged as 30 segments on Twilio's side. So that's how Twilio works their billing. Next up, we have SMS. These are purely text messages. These are going to be measured and billed in segments. Next up, we have MMS, which stands for Multimedia Messages. Uh, these are messages that include a file. So if you have an image or a contact card or something like that, it's going to be an MMS. And segments do not apply here. So you can have up to 1,600 characters and up to 5 megabytes of files attached. Um, and they're billed a little bit differently than SMS. Next up, we have the Twilio message queue. So the way that Twilio works is that they have a message queue that maxes out at four hours. So the amount of messages that you're able to queue inside of Twilio depends on your MPS score. So for instance, if you have an MPS score of one, you can only send roughly like 14 and a half thousand messages to fit that four hour queue time. So if you go over that, your messages will be put into a queue overflow status. So um, it's just that four hour queue time. Anything over that is going to be coming back with an error. All right. So we're going to kick this off with the attributes of a local number. First, we're going to begin with MPS. So local numbers are going to begin at one MPS, which is a maximum of 14,440 maximum queued segments. After the number is verified via that A2P 10 DLC process, the numbers are going to be assigned an MPS score of anywhere between one and 100, just depending on how that verification came back. So that little math problem there, 14,440 times the MPS equals the max queued segments. So this is how you can come to the conclusion on, okay, so I've got my MPS score and I know how many messages I want to send out in kind of one time. Is that going to be possible in Twilio's four hour queue? So you're going to take that 14,440 and multiply it by your MPS score. And that's the maximum queued segments that you can have at one time. So if that comes back with, you know, 50,000 and you're trying to send out 70,000 segments, what's going to happen there is 50,000 will go out and 20,000 will be put into a queue overflow status. So that's why MPS score is really important. 
Next up, we have MMS on local numbers. This is going to be capped at one MPS regardless of your verification status and the MPS on the verification. So if you're using a local number and you want to send files through it, if you're sending more than 14,440 messages at once, anything over that will be put into queue overflow and it will not send. So MMS on local numbers uh, at like high volumes is really recommended against. Next up, we have A2P 10 DLC verification. So this is required to send from local numbers. If you try to send without the A2P 10 DLC, those messages are just going to get blocked. So we have a few options there. Uh, first up is low volume standard. This is going to be the affordable option for customers sending less than 6,000 message segments per day. So um, if you're above that or you're close to that, I recommend not going low volume standard just so you have room to scale. Uh, it's going to cost $19 in one-time fees to set up. And then if that does not apply to you, if you're above 6,000 message segments per day, you're going to want to go with the standard brand. So this is going to cost $59 in one-time fees to set up. It's a little bit more pricey, but it's going to be great for you at scale. Once approved, verification is going to be anywhere between $1.50 and $10 a month to keep that verification active. And it depends on the registered use case that you choose during the verification. Most customers will be on that $1.50 a month um, kind of setup. That's going to be for something called low volume mixed uh, use case. That's what most folks are on. But um, there are some use cases that are $10 a month if those apply to you. Uh, this is going to be managed by a nonprofit org called TCR, also known as the Campaign Registry. Essentially, you submit it to Twilio, they verify that everything looks good, they send it over to the TCR, and then TCR comes back with either yes, that's verified, or no, we aren't going to verify this. Send back that status, and then if it is verified, you're good to start sending. If it comes back with a decline status, you're actually going to need to resubmit it with some different information. So we have a video on compliance that I'm happy to put in the description. If you get returned a declined H2P 10 DLC, I'd recommend taking a look at that video as your use case may not be compliant. And you will complete this H2P 10 DLC verification inside of the Twilio console. Next up, we have the attributes of a toll-free number. First up is MPS. Verified toll-free numbers receive an MPS score of three. Um, so it's just exact. You know exactly what you're going to get. This is a maximum queued segment of 43,320. So um, if you're going to be sending any more segments than that uh, in like a four hour time frame, you're going to want to either go the local route and try your luck with a higher MPS, or there are some great options. There's something called high throughput toll free. It's uh, kind of a secondary vetting process after you get the toll-free number verified, and that will allow you to achieve higher MPS. So 25, 50, 75, and 100 MPS uh, high throughput toll-free numbers are available. And then MMS on toll verified toll-free numbers is at 3 MPS. So for local numbers, it was at 1 MPS regardless of the verification. Here, it's going to be 3 MPS, and it can go up to 25 MPS with a high throughput toll-free. So if you're sending a large amount of MMS, large amount of files, toll-free is definitely the way to go for you. And on the verification side, toll-free numbers also must be verified to begin sending. If you try to send a message without verifying that toll-free number, it will come back with an error and it will not be delivered. This verification is going to be submitted in the Twilio console. I'm going to leave a link to both H2P 10 DLC and toll-free verification videos in the description, so feel free to just check those out. Submitting your toll-free verification is completely free, and it's free to keep. However, if you do that extra step of verifying it in a high throughput toll-free manner, that will be pretty pricey. For 25 MPS, it's going to be $250 a month. For 50 MPS, it's going to be $500 a month. For 75 MPS, it's going to be $750 a month. And for 100 MPS, it's going to be $1,000 a month. And verification must be completed through a Twilio rep. So you're going to have to reach out to their sales team and chat with them to really get that high throughput toll-free number in progress. Next up, we have attributes of a short code. So short codes receive an MPS of 100. So that means the maximum queue size is 1,440,000 segments. So a massive leap. This is for folks that are sending a super large amount of messages in short amounts of time because they can just send out so many messages. So short codes are going to cost $1,000 to get set up and then an extra $500 to enable MMS. So all in all, about $1,500 in one-time fees there. 
And then the short code pricing, if you want a random number, so this is uh, just a random number that's kind of shared with other folks in the Twilio ecosystem. It's gonna be $3,000 a quarter. If you want a vanity number, so this is a number that you get all to yourself, you're not sharing it with anyone. It's gonna be $4,500 a quarter. And if you'd like a customer self-leased, so essentially if you source the number from like a third party and you wanna bring it over to Twilio and you're paying that third party for access to the number, it can be hosted on Twilio for $1,500 a quarter. So most likely that won't apply to you if you're looking for short codes, but never know. And last up is the verification process. So how that looks is you're going to want to reach out to a Twilio rep and they'll send over some documentation and some forms that you're going to need to fill out with all your info. Then you submit that to Twilio and they're going to review it. And then any issues they kind of have inside of that form you filled out, they're going to come back to you, tell you kind of what to edit, what to change, um, just in terms of a compliance standpoint, so that once you submit it, you know that it's actually going to be approved. So they're gonna work with you to really get that all ironed out. And then that should be about one to two weeks. Uh, and then they're gonna request payment once that's all done. The second you pay, they're gonna submit that into a mobile carrier review, which takes about six to 10 weeks on average. So it's a really long time that you're kind of just waiting for those carriers to review that verification. And then once it comes back, you're good to start sending from that short code. So when do you want to pick local numbers? First, if you are wanting to send from a specific area code, local numbers are great, um, especially for like small business, because I know when I get a text or I get a call from an area code that I recognize, I'm more likely to look at it or pick up the phone. Whereas if I get a text from an area code that I'm not really familiar with, I'm pretty quick to just decline the call. So if you're a small business in your community, local numbers are great for just grabbing the attention of folks and making it more recognizable and more personal. Next up, if you're looking to send from a large amount of numbers, local numbers are great. So one really cool thing about A2P10 DLC verification is that it covers the messaging service as a whole. So essentially, if you connect Twilio to Texla, we create a messaging service that holds your numbers, and A2P is actually a blanket that covers over the entire messaging service, not just individual numbers. So you can swap numbers in and out of the messaging service and they will be covered under that A2P 10 DLC verification. Whereas the toll free verification only applies to specific numbers. So if you get a hundred numbers, you have to submit a hundred individual verifications for those numbers. And lastly, this is kind of time sensitive. So at the current moment of recording this, if you are looking to begin sending as quickly as possible, A2P is the way to go. Um, it's taking about less than a week right now in most cases, whereas toll-free is about three to four weeks. So I definitely recommend going with the HUP 10 DLC route. Because it's constantly changing back and forth from which one's quicker, uh, for the most up-to-date info, on which one is the quickest, feel free to just reach out to us at support at texta.com and one of our reps would be happy to get you an answer on which one's gonna be quicker. All right, next up, when is it a good idea to pick toll-free numbers? So first, if you're looking to send a high volume of MMS, we kind of covered this a little bit earlier. Um, if you're looking to send more than 14,440 um, kind of MMS messages at once, you're gonna wanna be on a toll-free number because local numbers are capped at that 14,440 MMS uh, in that four hour queue time. So anything more than that, go toll free. It's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. Next up, if you're looking to be as cost efficient as possible, toll free verification is for you. So the registration, like I said, is completely free to register and keep active. So the only thing you're paying for is 215 a month just to keep that toll free number. Next up, if you're looking to send an enterprise amount of text, high throughput toll-free is for you. So it allows you to just gain a high MPS score just by paying. Um, so if you have an MPS score of 25, you can send a maximum of 361,000 queued segments, 50, 722,000 segments, 75 is a little bit over a million queued segments and 100 is 1.4 million queued segments. So if you're sending a ton of volume, high throughput toll free is a great option for you. And if you are sending to Canadian numbers, toll free is great. Local numbers actually receive a large amount of filtering in Canada because the HUP 10 DLC registration only applies in the US. So it's technically not a verified number if you're sending from a local number in Canada and a ton of those message requests do get declined and you're paying for texts that never make it. So toll free is the best way to go. 
Next up, when to pick short codes. Again, if you're sending an enterprise amount of texts, short codes allow you to send 1.4 million segments within that four hour queue. It is quite a bit more expensive than the high throughput toll free. So if it's really about both price and scale, high throughput toll free at 100 MPS is the way to go. If you're not too concerned about price and you really just want the absolute best, short code is going to be for you. And if you're looking to be as professional as possible, shortcode is great. Um, every time you get a text from Uber or any kind of large companies, it's generally from a shortcode because it just looks more professional and the verification process is a bit more rigorous. So it kind of adds that extra level of compliance there. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video about phone number types. If you have any questions, feel free to just shoot us an email at support at Have a great one.